Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm doing some quick edits of some night shots that I recently captured while out and about one evening. I purchased a new 35 millimeter prime. It's an F 1.8. I was running around handheld and low light taking city shots and frankly just having a lot of fun. When I came back, I dumped them in Luminar and started playing around and realized that I could quickly and powerfully edit these photos in really no time at all. So I thought I'd do a little video about that just to be clear. My point is not you have to hurry when you edit. That is not the point. You should take as much time as you want and get the photo looking exactly how you want it to look. My point here is that if you are in a hurry, you can get a lot done with a minimal amount of time and effort and frankly, not that many tools or filters being used in the images because Luminar AI can do a lot for you. So let's just jump into it. Here's the first photo. I'm going to go ahead and click edit and let me get on the essentials tab. First thing I want to do is straighten up these verticals. It's slightly tilted and that looks better already. Often with night shots, the next thing I'll do instead of going to light is go to enhance AI because it really does help brighten up the image. And you can kind of see there how that's helped me. But now I'm going to go into the light tool. I tend to prefer a little bit cooler temperature and a little bit uh, more magenta tint. And that's just personal opinion. I'm pretty much always adjusting contrast and highlights and maybe bring up the shadows a little bit. And I think I've got a pretty decent looking image already. I am going to go get some structure and apply that to parts of the image, which requires me to do a little masking. So I'm going to increase the size of my brush and just mask this adjustment to the structure into the building here and some of the parking lot, simply because I just think that kind of stuff is just crying out for a little bit of attention uh, from the structure tool. I just like to do that. In fact, I was about to do this. I think I'll do a little bit right there, but that top section of the sign, yeah, you're not really going to see much of that. So that didn't really help there. But if you take a look at my photo, the before, there it is before, and there it is the after. I now think I'm going to pull back that temperature a little bit and create a little bit more warmth in it. And I think something about like that. And then I may go into color and come into saturation and maybe pull that down just a tiny bit and the reds and oranges. And I'm actually going to pull down the yellow a little bit as well. I want to desaturate that a little bit. And there we go. I think I have a finished photo. So there's my before photo and my after. Simple, powerful, easy, quick, that sort of stuff. Let me get photo number two. Okay, photo number two. I love this little coffee shop. I've, I go there occasionally, but mostly I just like the sign and the look of it. But first thing I'm going to do once again is verticals. I was shooting a little bit further back, 35 millimeter. So, you know, not a really wide angle, but certainly wider than, you know, um, other things could be, I guess. That was kind of dumb sounding, but I think you get the point. The verticals weren't totally really bad and aren't in any of these shots, but that composition AI, once you start using it, I think you'll find that it comes in really handy on a lot of different photos. Once again, a little bit of Accent AI. Oh, hang on a second. I'm not done with composition. This one I want to crop. I'm going to go 16 by 9. There's a whole lot of black sky, which I don't really care about. So I'm going to cut some of that out and just focus on the sign and the street in front of it. Now back to Enhance AI, which I think, uh, you know, looks pretty good about there. Back to the light tool, a little cooler. Uh, maybe a tiny bit of tint, a little bit of contrast. Highlights, I think they're fine pretty much. I might lift the shadows a little bit, something about like that. And once again, a little structure. So, oops, that's in the masking. Um, let's see, a little structure here. And I'm just going to pull that across the photo. Uh, actually, I am going to mask it. I thought I wasn't, but I think I will because I don't really care about some of that stuff over there. I mostly just care about the stuff here in the front. So I'm going to do a really quick and sloppy mask job. But that's one of the things I like to point out in editing is that when you're masking something in or applying edits, you know, you don't have to cover a whole lot of ground to have an impact. So let me just turn this tool off. If you look at the before and then the after, just painting it in part of that area, I think really helps. I pretty much ignored this other side, even though there's concrete and you might think, hey, pop that a little bit. I could have, but I chose not to. Um, I think color wise, I'm pretty good here, but I am going to go get a vignette and pull that in a little bit. And then with the advanced settings, give myself a little bit of inner light, which I like how that works because it's dropping a little bit more light on these people that are over here enjoying a cup of coffee and the light that's kind of shining off the sign and the door really does a good job of brightening that center. So there it is before the vignette and after. And basically what I've done is just concentrated your view on the core element of the photo, which is a door into a coffee shop and a really cool looking sign 
in my opinion. I just like signs though, graffiti, neon, stuff like that. I just love it. So one more time, there's a before and an after, and I think a pretty significant change. And again, just a couple of key tools, and you see that I'm using kind of the same stuff again and again, but it's powerful. It's really useful on photos like this. That's image number two. Let me get one more. Okay, image number three. This is something I've wanted to shoot for a long time, and I'm probably gonna come back with a wide angle to get some other shots of it, but I love uh, neon and all the stuff, as I just said. So this I grabbed a shot of. Once again, I'm gonna fix the verticals, and I just think Composition AI is frankly amazing. I absolutely love it. And, you know, uh, following pretty much a similar pattern here and doing some similar things simply because I kind of like that look. Now, season to taste, right? And um, I think I'm going to give it a little bit more enhanced AI, just a little bit there. And, oops, not color. I'm going to go to structure. I'm kind of in a hurry, so things are kind of moving fast. The thing I liked about structure here is that it really brightened up some of those other areas. So there's like the before and the after. I think that looks really good. I think the scene is kind of popping. I think that the red color just looks fantastic. I'm a fan. Again, maybe a vignette here. I'm gonna go probably pretty slight because part of what I like is I got visibility into the light that's shining in those trees. So if you look at the before, the trees are really dark and that sort of thing, but shooting raw, you have so much more you can recover. And I really like how that looks. So if I went with a heavier vignette, I would lose that. So I don't really want to do that. I want to keep some of that there. And there are a couple of young ladies over there having pizza, I guess. And once again, a little bit of inner light because I like how that operates on a photo like this because, you know, again, I'm focused on the core center of this photo. And of course, that's where the light is. And so I think it makes sense that you're going to have a brighter element or brighter section there. And that's what inner light, I think, does so well. And you can do that other ways. But I, I just think even if you don't even use the vignette, you could just put it on one just to kind of turn it on and then move inner light. And it, it just does so many great things. And the fact that you can choose a subject and move that around in the photo, super powerful. But there's a quick edit as well. That's edit, edit number three. There it is before and after. And so if you do the sliding uh, little window here, you can see a little bit of that perspective shift, which I think helped. And I really, I think, brought the scene to life. I think the colors are just screaming. I love that. I love the lights flashing. There's a little bit of signage, you know, the non-neon um, signs, you know, where it says tattoos and piercing, but really just the neon. I just think it all pops. I love color. I'm drawn to color. It just kind of pulls me in. And for night shots, stuff like this, I just think looks fantastic. But that's it, my friends. I just wanted to show you that with some simple tools, you can get some really beautiful edits. Beautiful is my term for it. You may not like this. That's totally cool. But I consider these beautiful looking edits. And they were simple. They were quick. They were easy. And yet really powerful results in limited time at all. Again, I'm not saying you need to hurry. I've been talking fast and moving fast, but this video is about how you can use kind of a speed editing kind of approach and get a lot done. And in fact, I did very similar moves. I could just come in here and create a template out of this and then just go slap that on multiple photos that I took of similar things on that evening and that would work great as well. So that's an idea to save even more time if you're in a hurry. And I've had a lot of people comment on my Luminar AI videos and say, hey, I love this because I can quickly edit. I want to spend more time shooting, less time editing. Here's an example of how you can do that. That's it, my friends. Have fun editing out there. Take care of yourselves. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you later and adios.